Sunshine Garden Arena was uh, uh, just a classic old dirty uh, wooden benches, loud ethnic crowds. And uh, I think my father thought that the idea was me getting in that environment, besides just the sport of boxing, but seeing the element that would kind of freak me out and say I'd go back to playing football with my brothers. But uh, I went there. I remember the main event was Ali Perez versus Pedro Soto. And uh, Ali thanked the crowd, and he, it was just amazing. I mean, there were fights and stuff, but, you know, I had had so many fights already by then. I felt so at home. I, I loved it. And he was <laughs> kind of miffed when he got in the car. He says, you loved it? What? You loved it? <laughs> what about the people fighting us? Uh, I loved it. I, I loved it. You know, so uh, it was the beginning of it. He never said another word after that. It wasn't easy at first because I, I know that my mother probably gave him a lot of pushback. And, uh, you know, he, he kept asking me if I was sure, did I realize how much I would have to invest and, and you know, what it takes and, and sacrifices I have to make and that sort of thing. And, you know, just like every word that a father would do to discourage a son from doing something. And uh, I was totally so. I saw the 76 Olympics and uh, that, that pushed me over the edge and there's just no turning back. I was pencil thin, uh, skinny legs, ashy, ashy skinny legs. Not that fast, didn't have good hands, but I hit like a, like a lion. I was, you know, I, I would throw my body into anything. The, the funny thing about me playing running back was I was a good defensive player, loved to hit guys, but as running back, I would get the ball and there would be an open field but a whole bunch of guys over here. So I would run for the guys <laughs> and they would be like, why are you running over there, running around? And I would, because I wanted the, the contact, I wanted to break tackles, and I wanted to hit guys, and, and uh, so that was my big drawback with being a running back because I just didn't, uh, I, I just didn't really get the concept. But you know, we're trying to score a touchdown, not break tackles and look, you know, spectacular. But that was my my, my career was all about hitting and uh, you know making good contact, making good cracks, hurting guys, and that sort of thing. But so I mean, it probably would have been good in some respects, but I probably would have been hurt all the time if I made it any to a higher level of play, you know. And now, surely given that your brother's credentials, you would have played at a higher level. Do you ever think about that? Yeah, you know what I think, I think about it when, uh, when uh, you know, my brothers have college degrees and they, you know, live a much more uh, stable life and the, the life that they lead, that they, they led after, uh, after sports and even during sports. Um, I look at my life when I was uh, fighting amateur and fighting and early in the pros, I was working, you know, at Barnes and Noble in Manhattan, you know, and they were in co living college life, you know. So there were a lot of things that I missed out on, and I felt I missed out on by, you know, choosing the route that I did. See McPherson using his jab. He's got an excellent left jab, and everything for him works off that jab and good movement as you see him using. McPherson is doing a lot of moving, but watch as Stacy McPherson... A moment when you're fighting, when you're, when you're in the hallway and, and you come around the corner and then the ring's there, you know, and, and you see everybody out there, you know, and, and it's like that, that moment to me is like, and he was saying the same thing, like, you, you know, who feels that? You know, it's like a, it's a, it's bizarre, you know, it's just like, I can't believe I'm doing this, you know? Even as much as you're trained and everything, you're still like, what am I doing? I'm like, lost my mind, you know? So when we all get together, we all know we know that. You know, we know that, we all know that feel. So that like big thing of like when you meet people like you have no idea, you know, when we talk about boxing, whether it's like, oh, yeah, I would have done that. No, you don't, you don't get it, you know. Everybody gets it, you know. And so there's like this huge like, uh, uh, you know, barrier that's removed from the person automatically when you meet him because you know that he knows, that he knows exactly what you went through. He knows exactly how it feels for, you know, whether fighting for the world title or fighting for the Golden Glove title. So, you know, that same apprehension, the same overcoming of your fears, you know. The only time you get to feel like that boxing is when you take a trip. You know, if you take a trip with boxers, there's a great camaraderie that you have that I, I always dreamt of having, like going to the Olympics, or, you know, and I went to the Olympics, but I did take a couple of trips and they were amazing. And you get to know those boxers, you feel like you're friends with them for life because you spend that time with them. And then you spend the days with them before the fight, which you usually don't do, I mean, it's all by yourself. And then when you do it with other fighters and you see what they're going through. Everybody had, I remember, I remember, um, uh, how was his name, Roberto Vinas. I took a trip with him up to Elmira. 
and he would brush his teeth over and over again before the fight. And all of us, like, you know, Davey Moore was on a trip, he was like, what, like I'm coming up, Davey Moore's winning the Gold Glove four years in a row, even before I started boxing. This guy was, you know, he was, but now he was like my buddy, throwing me orange and stuff. I and mean, he was all there cracking up at Vinyas, brushing his teeth, you know. And like I would see those guys out there, we said, remember we laughing at Vinyas? You know, it's like, so there's this, again, that wall's broken down and you have this instant bond with these people that, you know, can't really be described by, you know, anything else. So, you know, like you go to war together, yeah. even though we do it solitarily. But, you know, when we, get around each other, it's instant. Kid Shamrock. Eighth row knockout. Real fucking beer. Boxing's a sport. Well, hearts are broken. Just as often as noses. It's different every time. Uh, you always think that when you get into the ring, you kind of have to have an idea of how it's going to play out. But there's always a surprise, there's always a different way for the fight to end. And, uh, you know, the, the scenarios are endless, you know, because you're dealing with, you know, two, two individuals here, we're dealing with a bunch of people, that things that happen, and you don't know, you have to be ready for it, you know. And, and is that, you know, I, I, I remember I spoke about in one of the Q&As about the, living life on the edge. And the edge is like, you know, because win or lose the fight can be a turning point for you, you know? And going there, get, getting your head punched, and you can get knocked out in an instant, and, not, and everything could change. So, you know, you're living life, you're not going to work every day, and just, you know, it's a life on a day for day. It's, it's almost a moment by moment when, you're, when it comes down to fighting. So here on the stage, the same thing. I mean, the whole night could be hinged on one horrible performance. One, you forget your lines and be frozen on the stage. I mean, so they have that same kind of like, oh, that dread hanging over your head. Like, you know, I'm on the edge. I could, when I say I'm on the edge, I, you know, I could be walking and be fine with me and be dead than that. So that, in that way, it's, it's similar to boxing because you, you, you're walking the edge when you come out here because you, you could be the destruction of your whole night. You could be ruined, you know, for the next... You know, 24 hours or longer, or whatever. But, uh, but, but then when you when you make it and you walk over, you make make it through the tightrope and you get to the other side. It's a, that's the feeling, you know. You you walked on the edge and you survived, you know. Talk a little bit about Mike. A lot of the guys have talked about Mike in in many different ways, and you know, I think A as a fighter, he relates to you guys in a special in a different way right. other than regular actors. Just talk about that relationship that you've had with him going through this. Yeah, well, ha always knew about his career, especially in the amateurs and uh, and then, you know, his, his pro career. Knew he had a lot of talent. Didn't know why he left the, the game so early, but always had a tremendous amount of respect for him. Was really happy to meet him. But then when he started directing, obviously understood that he knew a lot about what he was talking about and a lot about this business. And then when he started coaching me directly, I was really kind of taken aback because, you know, I remember the first first rehearsal he said to do one thing and then he changed it and he changed it again like through the rehearsals then when the show started the first day he told me I want you to dig deep and get emotional and, and I did and then the next thing he says I want you to just forget the emotion I want you to tell the story and I was like what does he want me to do maybe I did it wrong I'll do... and then the next night he says you know fuck the emotion forget that you know I want you to I want you to be angry you know and I'm like okay which one is it and then it hit me it's like he's He's stretching me, you know. He's he's pulling things out of me and, and helping me make to feel all the different parts of what that monologue represents. And, and so now I understood, you know. He was he was doing the wax on, wax off, you know. You do this, you do that, and the result is this, you know. So even though I didn't understand the different part compartments of it, but when it came all together, well, when my understanding, I'm sure it still hasn't come all together. But when the understanding of that aspect of it came together. I had even more respect for him because I realized he was, he was playing me. <laughs> but then this day comes, and it comes to all of us, sooner or later. We can't make any more money for those guys in the thousand dollar suits. And that's when boxing kicks us right back out to the streets. The same streets that made us fighters to begin with. Your brother Don, he was here the other night, and you talked about, you know, football and boxing. He described it as, you know, at some point in your life, it's going to drop you off a cliff. Yeah. Talk about that a little bit, what that feels like. Uh, I numb myself to that cliff dropping, you know, to a great degree. Um, because, I, I mean, for me, I kind of had an awareness of it 
because of my father telling me about it for so long and kind of seeing those things as they were panning out in athletes that I saw, professional athletes, professional boxers. And so uh, I kind of numbed myself to it and dove into a lot of the things. There were a lot of things about dropping off that cliff that I really, um, I don't know if I would say I've yet to experience them, but I, I, uh, I need to really probably go through that completely, you know? And, um, you know, all professional athletes enjoy an endorphin level and a, an experience of, uh, uh, of triumph and, and whatever you get from that, that they can't replace anywhere. And, you know, I did sales and there were great sales and I did, you know, I was a pastor. I did things that, you know, gave me some kind of, you know, and it was all still all about me, but it always left me feeling wanting and, and, and still hurt from my boxing career, which is very strange. You have 25 years gone past that, you know, and I'm still feeling like I'm looking at the cliff, you know, because I still feel like a fighter who, uh, who's just not fighting, <laughs> you know, just not in the ring. I'm a fighter, that's my, that's my trade, that's what I do for a living. It'd be ludicrous for me to say, oh, I don't want to fight him, I don't want to fight him. I, I'm a fighter. I'll fight anybody who gets in the ring. I, that's my job. You know, it's funny, when I was uh, taking the train, it was one of the few times I've taken the train on this, uh, to play. Uh, so I got to sit, listen to music, look out the window, look at the Hudson River, and I was thinking still about the days riding along on railroad. I mean, to me, that is me. I mean, that, those years riding at railroad, I gave up everything. I, I, you know, I got out of high school early, and, and uh, uh, everything was all around just boxing, fighting, you know, and, and uh, I became a person. And as I did, I infused with that was boxing. Infused with that was competing, dealing with my fears and, and overcoming my fears and having triumphs and having failures and dealing with failure and dealing with success, all that stuff. So no matter what I d did after that and what, who I am today, that's at, at the foundation of it. And so no matter what I do until the day I die, because that, that experience was so intense going through that, that's how I relate to everything. I still relate to everything as a, somewhat, somewhat of a fight, and, and, and my determination level or my level of commitment to it uh, will help determine the outcome. And that's all you know, derived from my years in, of boxing, but going in the ring or boxing up at Times Square for eight years, you know, boxing guys from all over the world. Uh, you know, the, to me, that, the, it, it's the, the molecules that I'm made of right now, you know. I know the formative years are one through seven, well, my formative years were, you know, uh, 13 through 25, you know, in that respect to, to who I am. No matter how long I live or, or what, th what I'm doing or what I'm involved in or what I'm known for or what people look at me as, that inside that I'm always going to be a fighter. I'm always going to be a, a pugilist, you know.